This is new, Matt. Nampa pride is shining bright. Voice is strong in morning light. What? Tyler, take the mic. Telling stories every night. Is this personalized? From classrooms to the field, truth and laughter both revealed. Tune in for that special feel. Napa school's always real. Welcome to Napa, where dreams can grow. Matt and Tyler on the show. Welcome to Napa, where dreams can grow. Matt and Tyler. So that is our new what intro song, which we can work on too. That was awesome. Oh, that's and, outstanding. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, yeah. Nice uh, use of AI to help oh, me out make that. There you go. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, but everybody, welcome into episode six. Yeah, you in episode six. It is episode six. Yeah, yeah. episode six. The Nampa School District podcast. I am Tyler Keith, Nampa School District Digital Communications Specialist, and with me, as always, is my co-host. Matt Sizemore. That's true. Hi, I'm Matt Sizemore. I'm the, uh, oh my gosh, I finally got a community and media relations uh, with the Nampa School District as well. Happy to be here as always, and uh, what an awesome guest we have today. We're, we're starting late because we are just chatting with this gentleman, and he's way too much fun to talk to already, and some great stories, right, Tyler? Oh yeah, you know, luckily I did hit record halfway through, because some of those stories we could use <laughs> yeah. in this. So if it, just going to tell him again. It appears that it's you know going to be chopped up, that's why. But with us today, is Nampa High School Activities Director, Greg Carpenter. Greg, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's been fun already. Yeah. yeah. Again, <laughs> this is a dream I get to sit next to. <laughs> Channel 6 anchor, Matt Sizemore. Thanks former, for having former, me. Former, 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 <laughs> former, former. But thanks for having me. Well, thanks. It's a pleasure to uh, be sitting next to you as well. Oh, my gosh. The AD of Nampa High? I don't believe it. <laughs> well, I didn't know it was that prestigious, but you know, I love I love where I'm at. It's a it's a good place to be. Ah, yeah, good to hear. Good to hear. And we're excited to learn all about all the things that are coming up uh, with Nampa. Oh my gosh, uh, we were just talking. Who was I talking to? Uh, uh, Courtney yesterday. Mm -hmm. He was telling me two week. Is it two weeks from yesterday? School starts. Yes. That, wow, that came up quick. Yeah, the nineteenth. Yep. Yep. The nineteenth, and we host. A home football game on the 23rd against Century. Ooh, so it's coming up fast. My goodness. Yeah, for sure. So you guys have got a lot uh, well, I mean, I guess just like any of the high schools uh, around the country, really. But here in the Napa School District, a lot of big things coming up. You're already talking about a first football game coming up mm -hmm. in two and a half weeks. So yep. um, where do we start, Tyler? I mean, uh, tell us about some of what, how's, how's the off season been? My summer? Sure, yeah. Uh, they're never long or lack enough. Thereof. Yeah, they're never long enough. Tyler and I were talking about that this morning, but you know, a lot of things happen in helping, you know, our staffs be put together and obviously our, our facilities are getting upgrades and uh we're excited about that. I mean, from an A D standpoint, I mean I don't want to go overboard, but I'm really truly excited about the, the opportunity that we have in front of us with our, our stadium. So yeah. we're I mean, I really can't. I, I can't wait to show it off, and I know that Todd and Eric feel, probably feel the same way. Yeah, you know, I would agree with that. And you know, I, I let's just hit it right on the head with that. You know, we're we're getting new turf at the at Bulldog Bowl, mm -hmm. but everybody sits thinks it's just football. Football is the only group of kids that are going to take advantage of it. But that's simply not true. Can you kind of go into? Uh, I mean, what excites you about the turf, but then how our kids mm -hmm. are really going to utilize it outside of just those 11 kids on the field? Uh, it, that's, that's a great, great segue there because I don't think people realize that our football stadium, football field, Bulldog Bowl, is probably the least used facility on our campus because mm -hmm. we have to protect it so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, the wear and tear that uh, the football field, the, tur the grass turf, that we've had is, I mean, it's delicate. It really is, and it gets beat up. So we have to protect it. You know, I'm running out there telling PE classes, no, you, you know, you can't be on it because you're going to stomp, you know, mud holes in it, or the football team can't practice on it, or the band can't practice on it. Um, it's just, it's very delicate, and it's been that way for, you know, for years. So you protect it, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really hopeful and fortunate that we can open it up. Um, and again, one of the biggest uh, benefactors of this is going to be our marching band mm -hmm. um, and, and PE classes. And I, I mean, 
going from being used probably 10% of the year to 90% of the year. So we're really excited about that and maybe even other opportunities. We can talk about maybe outside entities using the facility more and more and developing those community relationships with uh, club sports or, or other programs. It only benefits our kids, yeah. and, and that's something that I'm excited about. Um, and, again, I'll relate it to Todd and Eric, too, because that's really what we want is to grow – more of our activities, more, you know, again, club soccer or, or any other club sport for that. Heck, our softball and baseball teams will use it in the offseason, too, as long as there's not a foot of snow. Right, yeah. but, right. <laughs> but other than that, other than, other than snow on it, you can use it every day. And, and that's the big thing that, that we're excited about as ADs is, is using it as much as we can. Yeah, you know, and, and speaking of that is, I, I believe it was uh, Will Barber, he was talking about how, like fifth period, as we go to the tri six, mm-hmm. you know, fifth period, that's really opened up for band to actually have a marching band class mm-hmm. so that they don't have to practice at 6 a.m. or 7 p.m. at night. They can actually do it during the day. And like you said, PE, it opens up mm-hmm. huge realm of possibilities there. I mean, it, it's truly one of those things that, not to sound cliche, that's really limitless on what we can use it for across the three schools. Yeah, for sure. Uh, again, the the it's almost limitless. You know, and yeah, our jobs as ADs may change a little bit, but again, the benefits outweigh all of that. So we're excited about just the opportunities that this this one facility is going to bring to our community. Yeah, you know, and with that, you know, Matt was talking uh, beforehand. You were talking about how really AD everybody thinks athletic director, but in reality, it's more activities director. So, kind of walk us through almost a day in the life of Carp. Oh, gosh. (laughs) For what you can say, that is. Well, I mean, you know, I I think every day you make a list, you know, and you and you try you try and check off the things off the list. But things, you know, come up uh, um, all the time that kind of throw you off a little bit, you know, and I think you have to be flexible and you have to be able to multitask. You have to be able to be, you know, ready for the unexpected. You know, it's kind of like Murphy's Law a little bit with activities. Um, But. Uh, being able to work with our drama department and our marching band and our choir, speech debate, you know, all of these things, dance and cheer. I mean, we have wonderful people who run those. So you kind of you kind of give them the reins as much as you can and, and let them go. And me, basically not screw it up, you know, <laughs> and, and kind of be the facilitator and kind of help them with understanding, you know, eligibility and attendance and I to say, you know, rules, regulations and policies and just say, hey, how can I help? How can I help you? You know, and th- there's there's people ask me all the time what it, what it takes to be an AD. And it's like, do you have a day? Because you know we can sit down and talk about it. Because there's there's no there's really no roadmap, and there's really no again. If you try to make a checklist, you're you're going to go off that roadmap in a hurry. And I think that's the greatest thing about the job is that you know I, I interact with so many people, you know, from kids to parents, uh, uh, coaches, community members, uh, and and the district allows us to, you know our as ads to kind of be that. So mm-hmm. I'm just fortunate, you know. Uh, sometimes I get overwhelmed, right? I think all three of us do. That's just, that's why summers are so important. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the four day week is going to be great too. <laughs> no, so, you no. Know, go ahead. Matt. You know, I was going to say. So, Greg, um, I've only been uh, now with the district for about three months or so, maybe a little bit over. Um, one thing I want to point out, not really completely on topic, but kind of going back to. Um, the new turf we're going to see and how mm-hmm. beautiful everything is. When I first got here, I got a chance to visit a lot of the schools, including all three high schools. And one thing that stuck out and still sticks out in my mind, even though it was under construction, there really wasn't a field, was walking through that tunnel uh-huh. into the Bulldog Bowl. Yeah. It's, what a, I mean, that's like almost reminiscent of, of like a college game day. Yeah. You know, walking through just to see that. So, I am so excited to see the finished product walking through that tunnel, and what fans are going to see right there yeah. is going to be glorious. Uh, I, I don't know if you want to expand on that, but what I wanted to say from from that is that's got me thinking about the upcoming season, whether it's football, soccer. I mean, you have so many things coming up, but let's rewind just for a second for somebody that maybe does not know um, the the brief or recent history uh, of your sports activities. Give us a little recap. Let's say just from like last year, what are some of the big achievements you can look back and think of, or, uh, just, uh, accomplishments? I'd say at Nampa high school, uh, 
it, it, it's hard to put a stamp on it, but the fact of the matter that we're going to be competing at the 5A level uh, this year, and, oh, yeah. and, and again, that's uh, it's hard for me to say because the 5A is the old 4A for the most part. Um, I, I think our kids, our coaches are rejuvenated because that's the level where we compete the best. So, you know, last year was a little rough being at the 6A, 5A level. Again, it's hard, it's hard to say. Last year's yeah. 5A level. You know, our, our kids are resilient. You know, um, our, our coaches are resilient. Um, they have a mindset that, it, you know, it doesn't matter who you play. We're going to suit up and play. So, you, you know, you're gearing your kids to compete at the highest level. Um, and, again, resilience is, is the word that I use. Um, at Nampa High School, um, our wrestling program, you know, has been paramount. Yeah. Um, they're they're very successful. They expect to be successful every year, and, and it didn't start overnight. You know, it started because uh, um, the coaching staff has been working with these kids since they were little guys. Yep. You know, and now you know we try and model that as this is what it takes for all of our programs. Like let, let's let's use all these things that have helped them be successful with our volleyball program and our soccer programs and our baseball programs that, you know, this is much bigger than just a high school program that, you know, we, we have to start preparing our kids when they're, you know, fourth grade, fifth grade. Um, and then we want them to be bulldogs, you know, and that's a big thing. So a lot of our coaches now are saying, how do we, you know, how do we uh, uh, encapsulate that? Like we want to know who our bulldogs are when they're little, and just you know, kind of bring them up and train them and get them ready for high school athletics. And uh, a lot of our coaches are modeling that. Unfortunate, you know, that we're in the situation we are with you know uh, the closure of West, you know, because West has been a big part of mm-hmm. Nampa High School for years. Um, I guess the benefit that if you're going to be the optimist when it when it comes to that is that now Lone Star Middle School is is 100 percent a feeder feeder school yep. to Nampa High. So now, you know, the relationships and a vertical alignment with our coaches and athletic programs, uh, I think it bolsters, you know, our future for athletics. So this year being 5A in team sports, as we, you know, we chatted before the, before the camera was on, um, it is going to be huge. And then, you know, our individual sports, um, again, those, co- those coaches have to pull up their bull- bootstraps and compete with the 6As. Um, wrestling will be fine. Um, but then again, you know, how do I back to your the question earlier? How do I uh, build the capacity of our coaching staff for those for those sports to say what can I provide you and what can I help you with so that you can be as successful as, as you can possibly be? And we, again, we've got great coaches that say, okay, it is what it is. Let's go, and and that's a good thing to have. So Napa High School, I think, uh, is in a good place. Um, so yeah. you know, when it comes to that, I mean, we're. Now that we're going to be competing for the most part with with uh, Skyview and Columbia and team sports, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know, with that, I'm actually super excited because watching the the rivalry really between Nampa and Skyview the past couple of years on the football field, mm-hmm. it's been fun. Yeah. Like for me, I'm I'm impartial. I grew up in Washington, but I know the teams that we had rivalry with and playing in those games. And you know, two two years ago. Skyview came into Nampa and played, but the place was electric. Mm -hmm. And then last year, Nampa goes over to Skyview and plays. The place was electric. Now you get to play all three teams in all sports, which is really going to bring that, you were talking about before, almost a pseudo city championship. We can bring that back and and really bring that community in. Because in today's day and age, yeah, we can sit behind our phone and just do whatever we want. But to be able to be there in person and look across, I go, that's my neighbor. Yeah, I didn't sure. realize that. You know, like all these things. I think it's going to be awesome to see. And Matt, you haven't been to a, a sporting event here in Nampa, but just wait. Oh, that's I'm all excited. I'm going to tell you is just wait. Oh yeah, I'm excited. I can't believe we were uh, again. We were talking um, before we hit record here that there was a long period of time when all three high schools didn't play each other, and that yeah. to me is mind boggling. Yeah, I mean, through the years with uh, two year classification cycles, you know. It, Nampa Columbia might have been up a level. Skyview were down, and then it flip flopped. I think I told you this. My son, when he was at Skyview, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, he did not play Nampa or Columbia in his four year career in football. Wow. Ba- again, I said in baseball, they they played each other. You know, and sure. there's some great, there's some strong rivalries, in, you know, in baseball. But uh, it's just a shame yeah. that that the those schools didn't play each other all three, and. Uh, uh, 
that should be necessary in a city like Nampa. Yeah. Oh yeah, you yeah. Know, no. It should be a way of life. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. And in Carp, one thing you were talking about your your history of you and Nampa. Mm-hmm. What's it's really interesting because of where you've been, where you are, where you were. Like it kind of you were you're all over. So <laughs> yeah. kind of walk us through that in like a nice elevator speech of what brought you to Nampa and then your kind of career and where you've been within Nampa. Yeah, for sure. We, uh, we moved here in 2000. Uh, my, my, my daughter was two and, and, and my wife was pregnant with our, with our son, Wade, who just graduated in, in 19, started at Skyview, um, did all sorts of things, taught classes and, uh, worked in the attendance office. And then, uh, but really what I came here for is a friend of mine said, Hey, um, there's an AD position here and I heard you just got your, you know, your, uh, degree, your master's in sports admin and, uh, didn't get the job right away, but got a job at Skyview, worked at Skyview for a year, went to Nampa high school, uh, as an AD for, for one year. And then there was a, like a coaching admin carousel that happened. And, and, and I was, uh, able to go back to Skyview where I was the AD for seven and a half years. And uh, boy, we worked with some you know tremendous athletes too. I mean, let's okay. The current principal, David Young, mm-hmm. I hired David Young as a as a football coach. You know, Ryan Bobo is the baseball coach who's been there since probably two thousand three, two thousand four. I hired Ryan Bobo. I hired Kevin Murphy. So I've got a lot of relationships, you know, at at at, at Skyview and in, in building those programs. And then uh, uh, Kim Beck at all uh, gave me an opportunity to be an elementary principal. And knew nothing about elementary education, and it was the best best thing that ever happened to me. Um, I was at a Waihee Elementary for seven and a half years. Uh, a principal decided to retire in January, and she came in and she said, "Hey, I need your help." And I'm like, "Okay." This was a Friday night after a basketball game, and Monday morning I was a principal. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, a lot of help. <laughs> oh yes, and uh, you know, again, just a tremendous uh, opportunity for me. And then there was a three-year stint in there where a good friend of mine, uh, Dave Beamer, who was one of my very first friends at Skyview, um, he moved over to CUNA and said, "Hey, can you come over and help us? You know, with our athletic department, our our, our guys retiring." So I went to, to CUNA for three years as the AD and. And then a position opened up back at Nampa High School as a vice principal. Diana Molina was, was the principal, and I interviewed, and I was a vice principal for one year. Loved, loved, loved being the vice principal at Nampa High School. Then all of a sudden, a uh, position opens up as an athletic director, and now Waylon Yarborough is our principal. I'm like, hey, Waylon, I, I, you know, I, I'd love to do this job again if you allow me to. And so now I've been the AD at Nampa High School. I think this is my fifth or sixth year at Nampa High School as the AD. Love our coaching staff, you know, and uh, uh, we are poised to do big things at, at Nampa High School. And, uh, I've, you know, I've got a staff that we've put together that uh, loves being Bulldogs, and that's the big thing. You, you, you've got to be a Bulldog to, to be at Nampa High School, and that's what we've got now. We've, we've got a uh, – We've got a bunch of bulldogs, and nice. so that's my 23, 24 year stint in education in, in Idaho, and I'll never go back to that place where I used to be. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> another state. That that's state a... that's on the west coast. Sure. But no, this uh, <laughs> Idaho has just been a, just a fabulous place, and Napa School District has been so good to our family that this is home. And, yeah. you know, and this is what I love, and I love what you guys are doing too. So appreciate you having me today. Of yeah, course. no, it's it, it's a blast. And you know, speaking about the history of Nap High, you know, mm-hmm. it was the first high school in town. Yep. So there's a ton of history uh, with with all sports. Band has done fantastic mm-hmm. things too on the on the field. You know, I say on the field, it's weird to say that for band, but with their marching bands, you know, all this stuff. And um, I'm excited, the band guy and me, because when I wasn't on the football field, I was playing tuba. You know, I'm excited to see what they're going to do um, this upcoming year. There's, there's a ton of opportunities, but Nampa High has something new that we haven't even talked about yet that's going to be starting this year. And Matt, we, you've kind of heard some of these stories about esports. Oh, yeah. And yeah. this in February, the IETA, the Idaho Educational Technology Association, they had their conference and they just put out a feeler like, hey, let's get some kids out there. And Nampa, some Nampa kids showed up. Yeah, and they didn't have a coach because I guess their coach was like, "No, nah, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore." But the Nampa kids show up, and Cody Kreps, our IT director, mm-hmm. he's like, "Hey, play anyway. We'll figure it out." Those kids destroyed yeah. everyone, 
and they destroyed Cuna, Bishop Kelly, you know, Bora. Um, I can't, there was a couple other teams, but they just they destroyed them. Like I can't say that enough to the point that there were people in the crowd from Lenovo, from LG, mm-hmm. from HP that were watching. Like these kids are good, and we're going to sponsor them. And no joke, high school kids got legit sponsorship for playing video games. Yeah, like NIL. Yeah, they exactly. Name, That's name exactly image, and like, yep. likeness, and those kids are top players in the Northwest and probably the nation. Yeah, you know, and we celebrated that at the end of the year. But I mean, I mean, Boise State's a big part of that with yep. their yeah. with their esports program. But yeah, we've got a chance to uh, kind of be a, a a beacon or a leader in esports. Uh, I know it's growing, and at our our excuse me our Southern Idaho Conference meetings, a lot of the other high schools are are starting to uh, kind of. Gain steam a little bit. Bishop Kelly, I think, is one. Bora might be one. But Napa, it will be the at the forefront. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing that you know I'm excited for us to do is go check out the new esports arena that's being built right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm working on helping, you know, the graphics, getting that stuff on the wall. But kind of walk us through what that's gonna look like for the upcoming year for for Nampa High. And then also I'm assuming Skyview and Columbia will also have access to it as well. Yeah, that's what I'm told. I, uh, Tyler, I don't, I don't know a lot about it, but I, I do know that it, that is, it, it's exciting. Uh, Cody Krebs has, has been leading our, our, our the project. Um, I just think it's going to create just tremendous opportunities for kids. Yeah, and and that's important. You know, and it's huge. I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge gamer, but I will tell you this: I just bought a PS5 so I can play NCAA football. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> you know, you yeah. know what I mean. So I mean, I mean, I think all three of us might be the product of of the birth of video games, right? Sure. From, from we were just talking about this the other day, from Pong to Centipede to Pac-Man, and those are all the games that I grew up with. So, yeah. you know, that's my environment. So, yeah, there's a soft spot in my heart for these kids to uh, have that success because a lot of kids, I think it's Rocket League that they're really yep, good yep. at, right? So these kids become so good and they get recognized that they actually are offered positions as programmers and coders because they find like all the flaws yep. and the defects and the tricks and you know the what do they call them, the cheat codes yep, and those sure. sort of things. So these companies, like you said, are paying attention to what they what their knowledge is. Yeah. And they're they're taking, you know, their knowledge to improve the game. And that's probably what these kids uh, uh, will have in front of them before long, whether it's college or straight to you know, EA Sports or yeah. some of these other uh, companies that produce games. Yeah, so. and one, one of the really cool things I've done uh, in my pa- in the past news days, if you will, um, I've done a, a ton of stories with Doc Haskell of Boise State. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people don't know, by the way, uh, Boise State University's esports team is the winningest sports program in their college's history, uh, which is huge. Crazy. They, they just yeah. win all the time. And one thing that he said to me that is that really sticks in my mind is how many kids are now going to college because of mm-hmm. esports from high school? And I mean, it, it's just a great example right there of uh, some of these kids that um, they they could be going, they could be getting full rides mm-hmm. potentially to places like Boise State University. Yeah, it, it, it's opportunity. Yeah, you know, it's the, the I was thinking about this earlier. The book grit, you know, and, yep. and the opportunities that kids have, and this is a new frontier. Yeah, you know, so to speak, and it's been a long time coming, but. Uh, um, yeah, we. This program is only going to grow. Yeah, and, and yeah, it it came in like a steamroller, and uh, <laughs> but it's a good thing, you yeah. know. Anytime you can provide opportunities for kids and, and pique their interest and get them excited, then other things are going to flourish too. Just like they never, those kids never would have gone to college, and now a whole world is opened up. Yeah. Well, it's going to be hopefully the same thing at, at Napa High, it, it, and it will be Skyview and Columbia kids at well as well. So. Yeah. So it's a good on, thing. On that note, we do know that, uh, of course, expectations high for mm-hmm. the esports team uh, coming into this year. I mean, we're just a couple weeks away from all kinds of different sports activities: football, uh, soccer. Mm-hmm. What uh, What are we looking at expectation wise for your your teams coming up? Obviously, team sports. I think we're going to be, you know, very competitive. You know, in the five A, you know, level. I think football's got a really, really great opportunity to be at the top. You know, I. I I think it's fair to say that you know Bishop Kelly is always going to be at the top of our of our conference, but then after that, it's anybody else, you know. And why not us? Um, our boys' soccer program is going to be very, very competitive this year. We're, I'm really excited about 
um, our second year coach Clifton Thomas, who's done a wonderful job of just uh, just creating a buzz. And our kids, I mean, they are just they're chomping at the bit to get on the pitch, you know, yeah, on the and, pitch, and play, yeah. you know, and they will also play on the turf, which I'm excited about. Um, uh, uh, our other sports, um, our, our girls programs are up and coming. And I, and again, back to Lone Star, I think that's going to bolster, you know, our girls sports to, to get better. Um, so we're, you know, we're excited about the fall. We're always excited about the fall because everything's new, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, our, our, uh, our cross country team, Coach Huckins, you know, those kids just love her and they love running for her. And that's a I mean, let's face it, I, I'm I'm not a runner, I'm a Clydesdale. So it's a special <laughs> it's a special sport, right? To go out and say, Hey, we're gonna go out and run three miles. You, you know, it. it's it, right, it's special, right? <laughs> yeah, so it is. that type of kid, she's so good at getting excited about, you know, goal setting and pushing themselves and, and things like that. That uh, I mean, we love what she does for us. You know, golf at the 5A, 6A level is now in the fall, and uh, that season's over in like a month. It, it's just a, it's a blur. But, uh, you know, Chuck Boson, our coach, you know, um, uh, riding on the on the coattails of Bobby Kincaid, who just qualified for the U.S. Amateur, you know, um, it gets kids excited about, wait a minute, I can do that at Nampa High School? Well, you bet you can. So, you know, developing golfers at Nampa High School is also a, a big deal for us. And uh, we're just uh, – the fall brings just a new, just a new excitement every, you know, every year, and we're, I'm excited to get going. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready, because like you said, in two in two weeks, and now you know we're we're like you know watching this turf field come together, and and uh, it's it's uh, it's going to be fun. So one one last thing before I go to my bonus question on everything. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, looking looking at things, we have the, an amazing community out there, mm-hmm. and I'm sure Nampa High just says the other schools always looking for people to help out, volunteer, mm-hmm. sponsorships, those kind of things. So, uh, what are some ways that people can help you out as far as that goes? And are you the best contact person for anybody that's like, hey, I want to help Nampa High? Who do I reach out to? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, calling calling us at the school and email. I mean, you know, at our school, I, I think a big thing for us, you know, with Nampa being, you know, we'll call it the flagship school, the oldest school. Come to our games. You know, we want our alumni to come back. We want we want to bring in our alumni. We want to bring in our you know our current families as well. But we want to just come to our games. You know, experience it. And how can we brand it? How can we just like welcome you to like this is what we do on Friday nights. You know. Um, it seems like you know when you expand and you get a second school and a third school and there's just more things for for people to do. Come back. We'd love to have you come back and be a part of it. And uh, anything that people want to do to help, you know, we would sit down and, and and talk about the ways that we that they can help. But the biggest thing that we have going for us is our alumni, and just come to our games, you know. And and I would love to. Because I hear stories, you know, about the past before I moved here with Rob Morris and some mm-hmm. of the big games that they used yep. to have. You know, uh, we we would love to pack the house. It was not too long ago we hosted a semifinal football game. I think it was Bonneville that we played. It was packed. Yeah. You know, we had a line. You know, out out, out to the street. You know, our parking's limited as it is, but I mean, it was huge and it was fun and it was electric and and uh, I love every Friday night to be that way. You know, for us. Uh, the opportunities too. We we have those great new uh, uh, video boards that ICCU was so kind to help us with. There, the opportunities to advertise, the opportunities to run commercials, the opportunities to run promos. You know, we're learning more about those boards every day. Whereas before, it was just a glorified scoreboard. <laughs> you know, but we're learning. You know, and now we've got more people helping us and more people that are uh, creating content and helping with you know advertising and things like that. It's endless. You know, and again, we want it to be like coming to a say a college game. We're never going to compete with Boise State, but we'll do our best. Yeah. You know, and, and at the end of the night, we hope that we put on a you know a good, entertaining show of of, of educational athletics, and uh, our kids make people proud in the community, and our coaches make people proud in the community, and and that's that's the best thing that we can do. And you you mentioned bringing people back, mm-hmm. but this upcoming year with our huddle stuff. Yeah. If, if you're over in New York, you can now watch Nampa High games. Yeah. And not just football. It's going to be everything inside the gym or anything out in the stadium. So that's going to be something, too, which we finally got the pricing information that we're going to be releasing here soon. And people can get a season pass. 
they can get a game pass. I mean, mm-hmm. it's going to be awesome to see because if I could if I could do that for my home school up in a little town called Zillow, Washington, yeah, then I would I would still do it twenty years later. I'd still watch just because it's my team. Mm-hmm. So I can re- only imagine Nampa has a robust amount of alumni out there. They're going to be able to tune in and watch Friday night, which is just going to be fantastic to see. Yeah, for sure. It, it you know it, it kind of. The thing that comes to mind to me is the world is flat, right? Because you're able to bring people together even through the the huddle system. Um, yeah, obviously we want you there. We want you in the in, you know in, in the in the stands cheering for us. But to have that opportunity where whether it's live streaming on demand, yeah, um, it's available to you. Um, the pandemic really, I believe, one of the maybe things that came out of it was we had just had the previous camera system installed through the IHSAA. And it gave people the opportunity, even though we were limited on how many people could come to our games, sometimes none, but uh, they were still able to enjoy that. And then I think that's that's kind of continued on. Huddle is much bigger than the streaming, though. Huddle, I mean, it's the it's recruiting, yep. you know, for kids. It gives them opportunities to to send film to you know college coaches. Our coaches use it to break down film and prepare for games and 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 you know watch their opponents because everybody has huddle. You know, now yeah. it's, it's a it's a huge, huge um, um, system for coaches and, and now fans. So yeah, we're excited about that. You know, it's it's there, it runs, and uh, even me. You know, I mean, I mean, I can watch anybody across the nation if I want to watch Texas football. You know, I we can. Yeah. So that opportunity is you know pretty cool. Which, which is going to be awesome. And the, here's my bonus question here. Uh-oh. So, okay. so the three of us. I mean, you guys grew up in California. You know, the what? we won't you say that. You were supposed to say that. What? But, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> we didn't know I, that. I grew yeah. up in Washington, but the three of us are college allegiance, as I should say, mm-hmm. are three of the mm-hmm. most iconic places to go in the fall. Me, UW, Lake Washington. Mm-hmm. To me, you can't beat that view on a on a October afternoon, just looking out over the water and seeing that. But Carp, you have an allegiance to a different school <laughs> yeah. that in the fall, I, I I would love to go there and experience. But kind of explain your situation with that. Well, I'm a huge Notre Dame fan. You know, love them or hate them, right? Yep. It's kind of like some other, like like the Cowboys or the Yankees or something hate them like all. that. Exactly, <laughs> right? You either love them or hate them. So growing up, you know, my, my dad was a Notre Dame fan, and I grew up in a in a huge Italian, you know, part of the part of the you know Northern California, and they Italian Catholic, so they loved you know Notre Dame. And I grew up as a little kid watching Notre Dame on TV every day, kind of like the way somebody becomes a Braves fan, or yep. you know, because they're on TV the all the time, yep. or the Cubs. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a staunch Notre Dame fan. I've been to two home games. Um, took my kids once, and I took my wife last year. Been to a, a number of games on the West Coast, including Washington, USC, a number of times. Don't, don't tell me he's a USC fan. I am not. No, okay. no, no, no. I am not. <laughs> the other, but, the other town across the, okay. or the other college well, across town, which yeah. is Ish. one of the best stadiums in the in the nation. By the sure way, and I've been there. But yeah. Uh, um, yeah, being a Notre Dame fan, uh, it's Saturdays at my house are called radio silence. <laughs> my friend, my friends know. My family knows. The dogs know. Not to, <laughs> not, not to bother me because that's the time where, not, you know, all things shut off except for that. Um, and to the, to answer your bonus question, I'm excited. My wife's excited, and uh, my wife and I are going to Texas A&M Labor Day weekend to see Notre Dame play Texas A&M. And the Kilmans, Rob, he's he's a big Texas A&M fan, so that's going to be fun. I'm excited. Ooh. I've never been to College Station. We're going to do the midnight yell the night before. Oh, that'd be yeah. way cool. And game day is there, you know, Saturday morning. So the midnight oh, yell is, is at midnight, yeah. right? And then our wives they want to they want to go see Herb Street. Right, of Saturday course, morning of course, yeah. at game day, and then the games. Dreamy. At, yeah, <laughs> the games at like six thirty, and then our flight the next day on Sunday is out of Houston at five forty-five in the morning. Oh. You talk about rock star. Yeah, <laughs> rock star so, no, energy. Don't don't sleep. I know. So no, we're excited about that. But thanks for asking. Yes, I am a huge Notre Dame fan. Yeah. And so, so Matt, to kind of round it out, your <sighs> college. And if you say Pullman, I'm going to just laugh at you because uh, that's different reasons. But so your question is: is what is the nicest uh, fall place to? What was it? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Like your your college allegiance. Oh, yeah. In and you know I'm thinking UCLA. 
So, yeah, it's, I mean, I grew up a UCLA fan. I had a, a bunch of friends who, because growing up, you either pick USC or UCLA. Correct. Yeah. Um, in, if you're raised in that area. Right. Uh, and I had a bunch of friends that were UCLA fans. And I am happy for that because the Coliseum is a dump over where USC it is. It is a dump. It sure is. But the Rose Bowl is yeah. not only historic, but it's beautiful. The yeah. entire area around it in Pasadena. Um, and I actually was raised uh, three cities away from Pasadena. So it was just a hop, skip, and a jump to get there. Um, but I used to love going to UCLA games, tailgating there. Uh, and that was always, I mean, oh, nothing like that on a fall night. I mean, it was beautiful most mm -hmm. of the time anyway. But as soon as that sun went down over the horizon on the mountains, oh, it just felt perfect. Everything lined up. It was great. Uh, but then a couple years ago, when, uh, during my first TV job up in Lewiston, Idaho, uh, about uh, 10, 11 years ago, uh, one of the teams I was covering out of uh, the two major college teams, University of Idaho was one. Mm -hmm. Fun to go to the Kibbe Dome, uh, especially once it got colder. But uh, I kind of fell in love with Washington State, and a huge part of that is because of uh, the late, great Mike Leach. Mm -hmm. He was the there. Oh, the Pirate is yeah. right. He was there. Uh, he was in his second year when I was in my first year up um, – reporting and just chatting with him all the time. Uh, and we got a, we, I got a couple chances. Uh, I was honored to, to get a couple chances to have one-on-ones with him. And he was not only just uh, easily the most interesting coach mm -hmm. uh, I've ever met, but easily one of the most interesting people, uh, humans I've ever met. So incredibly smart. And what a lot of people didn't know is so incredibly kind mm -hmm. as well. He was just a, just a gentleman and he cared not about, not only about, uh, his players, but just, you know, maybe reporters in their first year of television. Uh, he would just ask about me and my career and whatnot. And he was just a really caring guy. But then seeing his, I'll, I'll say his offense, in action, of course, he was the head coach, so you control everything. But the air raid that he had, I watched records broken uh, under under his leadership. Uh, the quarterback at the time, shout out to Connor Halliday, wherever you are. I heard he's up in Canada or something like that, uh, working working golf now. Um, but I watched him break the uh, single game, the NCAA single game passing record was seven hundred something yards. Uh, in one of the great, probably the greatest college game I've ever seen taken on Cal where, or was it Cal? Uh, I think it was Cal. Jared Goff. Yep. He went to Cal, yep. right? Cal. Yeah, yeah, it was Cal. Um, Defenses didn't play in that game. No, they did not. The final score was like 50-something to 50-something. Cal won because of a missed field, a chip shot field goal. They cooged it uh, from <laughs> Washington State. Uh, uh, but uh, Jared Goff had like 500 something yards. Uh, Connor Halliday had 700 something, I think, mm -hmm. and it was just the greatest game. Uh, and I, that team, I mean, just a bunch of scrappy guys. Not much of a running game, but uh, just a bunch of interesting, fun guys. And just covering them two years, I definitely grew an allegiance to Washington State. And so uh, I, I can't say that on, on a, a fall night, it's always fun <laughs> to watch them sure. up in Pullman, but. Uh, it was beautiful, and being down here, I'm going to more and more BSU games. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, got to say that. You know, Mike Leach used to teach a class when he was at Washington State. I think it was like his own, like philosophy. And oh logic. yeah, yeah, yeah. And my buddies here, that you know, good friends of mine, were like, "Man, I wish he taught that class online. We'd all take it." Oh yeah, you for know? sure, easy, yeah. regardless of age, there, anything. <laughs> it's yeah. funny you bring that up because across my feed yesterday, someone found an old uh, one-hour video of Mike Leach just talking about vertical routes mm -hmm. yeah. and so i'm watching it like what this is the coolest thing ever and he he's talking about all these things and then you know my wife walks in and she's like what are you watching i go don't ask <laughs> it's <Yeah>. football <laughs> well like one of the should. i think it's one of the best 30 for 30s on espn is, is when he was at texas tech and they and they intentionally dropped the fake game plan oh yeah on the sideline playing <laughs> texas that is such a great i think it's a 30 for 30 but it's yeah. a, it's a great great episode so if you get a chance to find that on YouTube or archive somewhere. It it's outstanding. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well yeah. well again, Carp, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh this has been episode six. Sure has. Yeah, episode six of the Nap School District Podcast. I'm not gonna play the I was gonna say play the song, outro. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I haven't edited it for an outro yet, but I do have just regular music. And until next time, we'll yeah. see you guys later. Yeah. Appreciate you. Go Bulldogs, go Irish. <laughs>